Hey, hey, War Pugs. So, this is the first time I've ever seen anything from WoW Such Gaming, and this, it's kind of funny. This is from Roanoke's, Roanoke Gaming's cousin's channel, apparently. And this is why you wouldn't survive the Dead Space Necromorphs. Now, I know perfectly well why I wouldn't survive. Um, lack of cardio being one of them. Um, number two, no. Number three, normally people with my native accent, they're the ones telling you to avoid areas where things like this are happening. Now, I, this is the first time, I never heard of WoW Such Gaming before, so this is going to be kind of an experience for me. If this is your first time seeing anything from WoW Such Gaming, please head over there, hit the like on this video, subscribe to them. Uh, first time seeing me, like the video, subscribe as well. I am being driven crazy at this point because my nose has been bothering me for like days. It's got to be something with allergies in this area I'm living in now. It's got to be something. I don't know. It's ridiculous. But, War Pugs, we watched the breakdown of the tw of the Twitch, um, the, the Twitcher thing. In no, that is a so much hell no from me. It can't even be quantified. So, it's time to hear all the wonderful ways we would die from the Dead Space Necromorphs. Now, all that being said, let's have some fun with it. Let's explore the way we get toasted. More pugs. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today. It means a lot. Let's get right into it. Leave a comment down below and like the video for the algorithm's sake. So you guys really like listening to the fact that you most certainly wouldn't survive apocalyptic scenarios in video games like Left 4 Dead or Halo, so I left it up to a poll on what should come next in the line of Doomsday Acceptance, and well, it's a worst case scenario in the same league as The Flood, but a little bit more violent. When it comes to infections that instantaneously morph your body into a hideous and brutal killing abomination, while also trying to assimilate all organic life in the universe, Dead Space's necromorphs take the disgustingly proverbial cake. Uh -huh. With all-inclusive clubs, the markers don't restrict anyone with an even more grandiose objective in mind the necromorphs will be even putting the moon from i like his choice from choice for music here i really do Jorah's mask to shame. With a very creative way of staying alive and stalking and executing their prey, they could be a relentless horror. If you really think you have what it takes to survive the creatures like this no i'm good no i'm i'm real good and scenarios like this? No, I'm I'm past good, man. I don't need any of that in my life. I need that in my life like another girl named Tiffany. Why though? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you why you wouldn't survive the Dead Space Necromorphs. As with all apocalyptic outbreaks, there must always be a root of origin. Of Not course. much is known of where and when the original necromorphs first spawned, but we do know how they are mass produced, and more importantly, how they inf- Okay, his music selection- his musical selection slaps, I'm telling you, I don't know. Trait ...and deceive intelligent life forms. Somewhere around two million years ago on the now frozen planet Talvalantis, excuse Tal me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, an alien civilization like rose it. from the oceans to develop a society somewhat akin to ours. They faced similar issues of overpopulation, which in turn was rapidly draining the planet's resources. During their desperation to find a solution, they discovered a spiraling structure known as the Black Marker. This unknown technology garnered a limitless reservoir of electromagnetic energy kind of like a cat with jam covered toast on its back it's just constantly spinning making that energy <laughs> flow the ancient race used this newfound resource to its advantage to power their society while also devising a whole religion around the constructs making duplications of the marker around their world known as red markers with these markers established in focal points that need the most abundance amounts of energy across the planet the markers released a contagion that developed the first known case of the necromorphs the race knew it would face extinction via what we will soon discuss the convergence of it and constructed a powerful device that froze the entire planet over as well as the necromorph moon orbiting it this was the only event involving the necromorphs outside those interactions faced by the humans but giving light as to how extreme things could possibly have gotten if the series didn't die out due to ea's vice gripping the franchise to death Rest look ea is guilty of many many war crimes against the gaming sphere like many many times over they have like 
I still remember when they were acquired EA Mythic, uh, when they acquired Mythic Studios, and how they started putting like it was a MMORPG, and they started putting advertisements for Madden. It was so annoying. They started advertising their own games inside of the game I was enjoying. It's like, can you stop it? in peace for Skiro Games. However, even during the invasion of planet Tal Volantis, the markers had already found a place to hide amongst the budding Earth 65 million years ago. Oh Giant boy. Giant moon-like structures known as Brethren Moons across the cosmos. More on that later. The initial tide of impending doom is less noticeable as an infestation in regards to the Necromorphs. For you see, the beginning stages of this dormant infestation isn't an infection, uh -huh. but a psychological manipulation. Signals cast by the markers will send beings of lesser intellect into deep states of dementia and even hallucinate to the point where mass homicides and suicides will occur. This is highly accentuated throughout the Dead Space series, especially in the Wii spinoff Extraction where Sam Caldwell hallucinated his colleagues as necromorphs and proceeded to butcher them all. Whether well, congratulations, you have reached a whole new level. This is, this is getting... This is wonderful. The marker's frequencies compel the victim to go insane or duplicate its structures. It all serves a primary purpose. The uh -huh. contagion release seeks to take over as much biomass as it can, so mm -hmm. the higher the body count and weakened survivors, as well as more established markers to amplify the rate, the more easily they can take over the bodies of their prey, live or dead. You may think this frequency generated by the marker is just a discrete sound wave that messes with their heads, but it also transmits an electromagnetic signal so powerful that it can transmutate any dead tissue within its radius down to the molecular level to that of the necromorph. This is mainly used to reanimate already dead organisms in the area. Once there is no more room in hell, the dead will, well, walk, run, crawl, climb, and basically move in any way they see fit across the earth. The newly created no. necromorphs will develop new forms as they see fit. Also, more on that later, and look to spread their own pathogen to new victims. Bro, that's disgusting. That is utterly disgusting. Rona didn't get into how much how disgusting these things were. The few other things I've seen about Dead Space haven't gone into how just oh no. However, unlike the flood in Halo, this certain pathogen can only do its horrific magic with a totally dead body, unlike the flood who immediately hijack a living or dead body of biomass. The necromorphs will immediately attack any non-infected personnel and try to kill them in the most brutal ways possible. If successful, they will inject the pathogen into the dying or dead body. The pathogen spreads beyond rapidly through the corpse, causing cells and bodily functions to become self-destructive by going into base basically overdrive to convert internal organs, bones, and flesh into necessary weapons and tools to hunt further prey depending on the host's body and capabilities. Due to huh. the ludicrous mutation time of just a few seconds, the body's accelerated transformation will cause tremendous amounts of heat, causing the blood to boil, rupturing veins and arteries and sizzling through skin, causing even further deformed looks on the skin of the newly formed necromorphs. During this time, a majority of the organs are repurposed to amplify the strength of the necromorph, causing yellow bioluminescent and sacs to develop around the body, which may be a reservoir to keep them energized considering they explode when ruptured. And they will go into hibernation if they are not attacked after a while, so these energy sacs could keep them alive over extended periods of time. Repurposing bones... I didn't know about the energy sacks, and I was better off not knowing about the energy sacks, I'm just saying. To become blade-like weapons and organs to increase their agility to jump long distances, they can ensnare victims quickly as they claw, Oof. decapitate, gash, and maul you to death. Much like the Flood, the Necromorphs will hijack any available host, as long as it was a viable once-living host with biomass. Human infants can be repurposed into agile, long-range killing hentai machines. The stock... Now that's the most, you see, for me, that's the least disturbing one, because I'm a fan of 40k and cherubs are a thing. If you don't know what a cherub servitor is, have fun with figuring that one out. Your types coming from a fusion of twins or two similar hosts, and when enough biomass starts to be cultivated, necromorphs of multiple beings that are even more dangerous can be made. In the Dead Space novel Martyr, dogs and fish were shown to also be affected by the plague, as a fish exposed to the disease became exactly like human-formed necromorphs and hastily attacked any non-infected aquatic life in its vicinity. Nah, you can't necromorphs do that. You can't put two male betas next to each other.
causes a problem. A high survivability in most environments, most notably in the vacuum of space, which is probably due to the lack of a respiratory system in the first place. Uh -huh. The almost demon-like creatures have the durability to even withstand decapitation, and the only real way of killing one is by dismemberment. You can literally cut or knock the head of a necromorph clean off, and they will still charge right at you, taking their legs, arms, and head off systematically to force enough blood loss, because they will bleed out and die, considering they have a less active vascular system that would prevent hemorrhaging. This method of killing the necromorphs is probably the reason why humans tend to fall in such great numbers to them. Uh -huh. Humans are innately prone to shoot for the head or vital body parts when trying to kill an attacker. However, having to dismember multiple limbs to take out one target would not only be difficult for a majority of people as numerous necromorphs were to attack, but also it Bruh. would be extremely traumatizing. Necromorphs are fairly violent creatures, but do show some levels of hunting coordination and tactical skills skill. Many necromorphic beings can be found roaming in packs or even herds. However, they do not openly communicate or show any signs of social interaction, hinting they are all of one mind. When there is detection of prey to hunt in their vicinity, they will act in a number of ways waiting for their next victim. Some yeah. may crawl into cramped or hidden spaces, awaiting the arrival of any unaware bystanders. Much like the xenomorphs, some have also played dead to lure survivors into a false sense of security before striking. Don't forget to double tap, people. Yes, rule number two, double tap, always, guys. Rule number one is the one I break the most of, cardio. Cardio is important. However, when there is no viable host to hijack, they either wander aimlessly or haul. Look at that dude just staying. In, he was just staying in there by the seats. He was just like, eh, nothing's wrong. This is the thing walking behind me. Unused decaying corpses to discreet locations, most likely to harvest their flesh to create more drones and in turn contribute more and more to the eventual construction of a new Brethren moon. Why, Much like the though? flood, the necromorphs are beckoned, commanded, and controlled by an all powerful entity created from the biomass of countless lives. In this case, by the Brethren moon who further their broadcast down a ladder to their receivers known as the Markers, as stated earlier. Forwarding two million years after the events of Toe Volantis to planet Earth where a Marker lay dormant for even longer, a black Marker landed on our planet about 65 million years ago. Does that specific... No it's always about Chicxulub, isn't it? It's always about the Chicxulub impact. Remember ring any Jurassic bells? It should because that was the time period when the dinosaurs were wiped completely out and set a new age for the planet. Except it wasn't a meteor that committed the genocide of our reptile-like birds of yesteryear. No, the black marker killed off all of them. What really killed the dinosaurs? Me! Oh and pretty much force-fed the evolutionary process of our primal ancestors and gave a boost to our intellectual capabilities, thus spurring centuries of human development that the marker could corrupt and soon cultivate at a much later date. It wasn't until the year 2214 that noticeable effects cropped up in the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico. Anthropologist Michael Altman, who had been studying the Chicxulub crater, where it's hypothesized that the meteor that forced the dinosaurs into extinction had made impact because of numerous strange anomalies including gravity anomalies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Altman led an investigative research team to extract the strange artifact from the depths of the Gulf, although unwilling... It's so amazing to me how science changes over the years because, to be quite honest with you, the Chicxulub impact was not even a thing when I was a kid. Nobody knew how they died at that point. Nobody knew. Oh my god, what the hell? Willingly, as he had been forced to front the extraction due to his deductive skills by the covert government organization Dredger Corp. During the initial Dredger dive, Corp. I a love it. staff aboard the submarine became insane. After numerous failed attempts because of sporadic and even violent crew behavior, they eventually got the marker on board their vessel alongside a sample of unknown tissue, all while the image of his girlfriend's mother appeared before him, informing him exactly what the intentions of the black marker were. Altman, while hallucinating, was the only human able to get within a close proximity of the marker in its new holding facility. This unintended side effect drove others to worship him as a deity. Uh. Those that worshipped him as a deity would act violently to the point of murder to those who did not believe his new faith. Okay. Not letting it get to his head, Altman escaped fearing the weaponization of the marker's power and warned the public in D.C. This outburst angered the government officials who recaptured him and sent him back to the facility where a necromorph outbreak soon occurred. Yay. On his way out at the cost of all of his colleagues' lives, returning to shore, he realized there was a way 
Kuwait and the marker before it began its hostile takeover or weaponization. Heading back to the underwater facility, he replicated the genetic code of the marker and forced it to halt the outbreak. Once the necromorphs in the facility were nullified, he caused the base to self-destruct and sunk it with the marker. Not long okay. after, the Earth government found and killed him. With the widespread knowledge that Altman knew of the alien technology and wanted to prevent its use in evil, the government released a fictitious story of his death in order to place him as a martyr that would eventually start the Church of Unitology. Oh, Altman's lovely. death not only spurred a galaxy-wide religion, but also provided the genetic codes to the Black Marker. Much like the aliens of Toe Volantis, the authorities of the planet wanted to use this spiraling structure as a source of energy in an already overpopulating world. Secessionists took these codes and built three red markers, somewhat less weaker man-made versions of the Black Marker on distant planets. One second planets and locations, with outbreaks of dementia, murder, and eventually necromorphs wiping out all personnel. Knowledge of these Oof. outbreaks were stricken from all records in 20... Ren and Stimpy. Best cartoon ever. Ever. I will not broke discussion on this. 311. Nearly 200 years later in 2508, does the human race face the issue of energy consumption again due to overpopulation? And so deep space mining for resources began with the USG Ishimura. The Church of Unitology eventually caught wind that a planet called Aegis 7 harbored one of the red markers designed by the code written by Altman and commissioned the Ishimura to extract it. The excavation awoke the necromorphs and diluted the minds of the colonies there. The colonies fell and the Ishimura escaped, but only to become a ghost ship filled with the abomination. This is where Dead Space picks up as we see through the eyes of Isaac Clarke and experience the Necromorphs for the first time. I may be skipping a lot of info coming up here, but the point of this video is to cover why you wouldn't survive this. Yay. Not a total history lesson, just context at the ramifications that come with the Necromorphs. <laughs> that looks like Cho'Gath from League, I'm just saying. Isaac survives the horrific encounters, learning that dismemberment is the only way to kill the creatures, and once someone turns, they are gone, baby, gone. The following events had Clark subjugated to horrific violence and manipulation of his mind. His girlfriend, Nicole Brennan, had been stationed on the Ishimura, mm -hmm. and while he thought Nicole had been aiding him in his efforts to escape until he was cornered by a government agent and shown that Nicole had committed suicide before he had even arrived, the Marker knew his connection with her and manipulated him to return the Red Marker to Aegis 7. Soon after, Clark engaged with what he assumed was the hive mind of the necromorphs controlling them, and soon he was able to kill it. Isaac and three others would eventually be rescued and sent to Titan Station, where for three years he was placed in stasis and was drugged while Earth government scientists experimented on him. Yay. Using that god awful machine that pokes a needle into your eye, be careful. Don't, I don't want to see this. Not to screw up because that looks. Oh. God. to pretty much extract and exchange I lost my fifth grade year out of sympathy right there information from his brain, they acquired blueprints on the marker Clark was exposed to. The Site-12 marker was developed. When you are exposed to markers, they will leave an imprint on your mind if you are able to survive. Meaning if one person survives, those with the initiative to harness their power or regard the markers as gods will forcibly extract the code from the ailing victim. Of course, not long after Site-12's marker was constructed, Titan Station was overrun and Clark had to fight his way through it all once again, falling further into his hallucinations of Nicole to try and torment him into submission or getting to help the marker or even killing himself. All while dealing with Dana who had been hiding the fact that she had been a fanatic from the Church of Unitology the whole time and the Earth. How did she hide that from him? No, I don't. I don't want to play it. I don't want to play it. Just somebody give me an explanation, please government trying to kidnap Clark in order to, of course, weaponize the markers, because that's what the government does in every game. Yeah. So basically dealing with undead, blade-wielding science experiments, religious fanatics who view being killed by a necromorph is glorious, and military power, which is exactly what we'll be facing in reality. And then following events occurred to where Isaac was face to face with the artificial marker, being chased by an invincible creature known as the Ubermorph, and being mentally confronted by visions of Nicole telling him that Clark needed to die so that the marker could inherit 
Parrot him and commenced the Convergence event as hundreds of Necromorphs converged on the site. The Convergence event occurs when enough biomass and or Necromorphs have been accumulated. Uh -huh. All units will come together to the available marker and assimilate to create a Brethren Moon, a gigantic moon like effigy made completely from Necromorphic flesh. The Brethren Moons that resonate signals to siphon planets of all their life and even the stratosphere of their planet, pretty much making the planet barren and void of any kind of life. Considering that these Necromorph moons predated humanity and were the ones to launch a black marker to our planet to further our evolution, it's safe to say that the Brethren moons and markers were the reason humans never came into contact with alien life. Most civilizations in the cosmos were probably already extinct and assimilated into the Brethren moons by the time we became a spacefaring civilization, which probably gave more reason for the title Dead Space. Uh -huh. got these races to the point where medical... One of my favorite theories about why we haven't heard anything from aliens is the, is the Dark Forest Theory. And the Dark Forest Theory, one of the things in it is everybody's already... Well, no, that's not the Dark Forest. Everybody's already dead is one of the theories, which is... <laughs> Yeah, that's not a good way to be. ...and interstellar technology allowed for further population growth, but at the cost of overpopulation and depreciating resources. The Brethren Moons knew their markers would be sought after and constructed in numerous key positions in their colonies, overpopulation being something that could and will happen to humanity as we grow more and more. Now, if you've made it this far through the history lesson, how the Necromorphs behave and how the markers will warp your mind into either becoming an obedient cult nut, a hallucinating murderer, or constantly leading you astray, and you still think you could survive the arrival of either a marker or worse yet a breath dude i i already confined myself to the fact that i would die relatively early in this Brethren moon well let's go over what would happen if it landed here today okay well, it's already here but you get what i mean it starts today it's actually hard to say what the initial outbreak would be like considering the events of dead space were all within isolated incidents outside the stratosphere of earth however we might have known if dead space 4 would have happened because we had this cliffhanger here that will never get to see the light of day. But let's say the US or Mexican government caught wind of the black marker and its unusual properties off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Much similarly to the events of Dead Space, excavation teams would be deployed to research the spiraled structure. The extraction team would most likely either be wiped out from murderous dementia that would in turn create necromorphs, or the team would be subjugated to mental manipulation as they returned with the artifact in tow, maybe with somebody similar to Altman that could get within the radius of the marker. If the marker were to attempt a long-term strategy of widespread takeover, manipulation would be the better route as to not have its full intentions known just yet. All would be in secret as it is lugged to a government facility for testing. Personnel may experience mental trauma, but high officials would deem the electromagnetic forces created by the structure to be too beneficial to pass up. Those affected by the marker would relay they knew how to create identical structures. The negative effects would be outweighed by the positive effects as the marker would manipulate its unwilling participants into. While we Yay. are not necessarily reeling from the extreme side effects of overpopulation like previous galactic societies, we are certainly getting to that point. And it only took watching a superhero movie about a purple guy with a big chin to get people talking about it. Oh snap! But with the growing <laughs> need of renewable energy, most of the world has been pushing for clean new ways to attain it. This answer to an inevitable energy crisis could either spur multiple red markers being built in Mexico or the USA or even both countries, or have the fossil fuel industry trying to halt production of the markers as they would be a giant hindrance on their business. Either way, with the manipulation of the marker, naysayers would be brought in to inspect them and in turn change their cause because of the mental manipulation. With the structures and their limitless energy, a sporadic growth in their numbers would be spread. Highly populated cities would rectify them, causing an industrial boom for production and energy standards. This would be praised as a step forward in human achievement, possibly moving overseas to introduce the markers to other countries. Eventually, once the markers have made their way into enough key locations across the globe, the Brethren Moons will signal to release the contagion and start to show its effects more so than just the mental manipulation, causing mass populations to gradually but surely grow more insane and to cause mass riots and murders that would flood the streets of major cities and urban areas. News organizations would chalk it up to mass hysteria, uh -huh. while religious organizations would label it as the end times prophesized by their own faiths. Those that worked with the initial construction of the markers would go to the public and declare their origins, much like Altman, who blew 
the whistle on what the market was tr actually trying to do. Whether government interference would try to stop them or assassinate them, the already spreading chaos would also be a prime concern that could derail this. People would devote themselves to the markers religiously, seeing them as the true calling of humanity, and with the murder rate that would beget the next step, the Necromorph mutations. People killing each other over false realities, those that have perished would return due to the contagion, transforming into demon-like killing machines. Uh... Basically, at this point, if you live in a major city that demanded the new energy production technology, you will probably be one of the initial persons that went insane and was killed, or you imagine someone else as an evil entity and killed them instead. If you get past this stage or portion of the outbreak, well, that's the easiest you're gonna have it. The person you just killed may reanimate rapidly into a necromorph and attack mm. you on sight. The necromorphs have a number of forms they can become in varying sizes and levels of lethality. Regular ground troops like the most well-known slasher who use blade-like arms to rip up their prey, suicidal types that will self-destruct Oh my god, Ken. Oh, this is a brutal. Mm-hmm. ...to kill their enemies like the Exploder, wielding an over-energized sack on oh, its nice. arm, and the Crawler converted from infants that will lure prey in with innocent cries and then explode. To those that may ask why a sane person would be tricked by such a disgusting mimic of a baby, well, the marker makes you insane, so... Ugh, what? Well, a bloody mess. Really? The pregnant that will carry a horde of smaller infected spawns when shot, and you will also be dealing with tiny ass necromorphs that are merely just the heads of the deceased and bug leg looking atrocities. You also have infants and babies being morphed into lurkers, small but fearsome creatures that attack at long range even more effectively in low gravity environments, considering they can adhere themselves to any surface with ease and then fling bone shards at prey. Dogs uh -huh. can also be shifted into this variant Not of the necromorph. Rover. Once enough biomass culminates in an area creating what's known as the corruption, necromorphs like the Guardian will perch themselves amongst the goop. They are not mobile, but if a survivor approaches too closely, they will be eviscerated. Like the Leviathan that will drag prey in with its giant tentacles, the hive mind that could decimate large numbers of people due to its sheer size, the brute who through pure strength can rip you apart, yes, every infection has to have that <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. And of course, there were generators like the hunter or the ubermorph who hunt down their prey the most relentlessly. And when one of their limbs is severed, will almost instantaneously regenerate, almost seemingly invincible to damage. It's nope. possible that these creatures are created from a pure form of the corruption as they are not seen until the late stages of an outbreak. There are multiple other forms of the necromorphs, but I don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. With all of these deadly forces being tricked into an explosive death, being chased down and ripped in half, having a head rip off your head to replace your head, a monstrosity rip your head off, a brute rip your head off, a baby rip your head off. Well, in a lot of these scenarios, they're going to be ripping Ooh. your head off. You can try fighting back, but in the haste of the initial outbreak, most would be using assault weapons to retaliate against the necromorphs, but mostly be ineffective as a majority of these necromorphs would shrug off the damage and pace forward. It would be a rare case for an individual to discover that dismembering them or even burning them would be the best way to dispatch them, mainly because we don't have the plasma cutter and line guns like Clark does. While uh -huh. you are fending off hordes of these monsters, the markers will also still be bending your will. If you find a safe place to hide, you may be coerced into suicide against your own will. So you may be thinking to have an army or armed forces to attack the problem at its source, uh -huh. the markers. Destroying a marker. The only way to handle this thing is from off planet doesn't necessarily nullify its effects, as any shard or remnant of it will still emit an equally powerful frequency that will keep nearby necromorphs fully functional. The only way to extinguish the full effects of the marker is to fully eradicate every piece till there is nothing left. Nukes. Only by hellish fire can these shards be disintegrated. Or, if you somehow have the imprints of the marker in your brain chemistry, and you fight the psychological warfare head on, could you also render the marker null. So just like last time, world governments will need to whip out those nukes and high damage bombing strikes to eradicate them. But the worst part is that these markers will most likely be established in many integral cities. Many uh -huh. high ranking officials may be working for the markers or have killed themselves or have fallen prey to the beasts. It would be a swift and brutal end to humanity as maybe a few markers would be destroyed, but their remnants still commanding the hordes and manipulating the survivors. Within just a few days, the convergence event will occur, calling in all necromorphs Ooh. to give birth to the brethren moons. The 
Dude, this this game, like, you just get you get roasted. Morphs will ascend to a giant Bro, sphere in the sky cooked. as these moons create a grim image on our horizon. Our stratosphere would also be siphoned away to construct it. If we Good do job. somehow survive past the mutilation, mental anguish, the riots on the streets, and dying by even our own hands, we will bear witness to the earth losing what gave its ecosystem life as we gasp desperately for air and fade away. Another grim reminder that we ain't surviving something like this, and if we saw anything by the end of Dead Space 3, oh my humanity God. was screwed either way. If previous alien civilizations died out trying to fight back against the Brethren Moons, what makes us any different? We tend to believe we Oof. are the strongest and most resilient race, but we can also die to choking on a chicken bone. True. We would die in hundreds of ways while trying to just cut one arm off the weakest form of the Necromorphs. We ain't making it through this. That about nope. wraps up this video. Did I miss anything? Was my knowledge of this subject off? Did I mispronounce something or get a detail slightly off? Be rate me in the comments. If you enjoy the analysis, like, comment, and sub, and ring that bell for updates. I'll be doing another one of these soon, so make sure to be looking at the community tab of my channel for the next poll of what should be covered next. Don't forget to donate to my Patreon to get shoutouts, big rolls on my Discord, and more. Shoutouts to my Patreon donators, Lovable Tester, Mario, Nato, 6141, Ricardo, Ascension, Song of the Void, Chill RB October 15th. And hey, I've got t-shirts and merch out too. I'm holding a fan art contest until I hit 100k subs. And until next time, I'm Zach Gass, aka Wow Such Gaming. Stay wow. <sighs> My god. Warpugs, there is a limit. Upper limit to the BS I'm willing to endure. Um, and this would be part of that limit because, my God, there is no way. There is just no way. People don't understand. In the event of a, in the event of a global issue to this scale, you, you would most likely get, go down with the ship. I'm just saying, it's just going to happen, especially if you're in a major city. Any kind, any kind of major event um, disease, war, anything like that. Living in a major city is pretty much an automatic bet for you going through some major difficulty and continuing your organic existence. I will say it like that. Um, so yeah, I would, I would be done relatively fast if this happened. And I know that about myself and I'm okay with that. You want to know why? Because I'm a realist. And we have more tigers in captivity in the United States than there are in the rest of the world. Now, I live in an area where, you know, I'm not around any of these said tigers, which is a good idea because the second civilization collapses, the tigers are going to get hungry and they're going to come looking for people. And um, there's more tigers in Texas than anywhere else in the world right now. So um, everything's bigger in Texas, including the cats. Have fun with that. No, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with this garbage at all. N no. Because this th the guy in the center looks like he's waving his hands there like he just don't care, but the hands are sickles, and that is BS. Especially if they had the Twitch ones. He didn't even talk about the Twitch ones. The ones that just phase in and out. That's ridiculous bullshit. And that is illegal. I'm just saying. Warpugs, I'm going to head out from here. Uh, all the while such gaming's links are going to be in the description down below, including my own. Be sure to sign up as a Patreon or a member for early access. Check out the merch store. I'm going to head out from here. I'm going to go cry, and I'm just going to cry in the bathroom for about 45 minutes thinking about all the ways I could get pulverized in this. And none of them are fun. I'll catch you guys next time.